Okay. Um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the November 21st meeting of the Needham Commission on Disabilities. Um, everybody should have an agenda that was sent out, and I would like to start by introducing um, our guests. Um, so we have Stephanie Gray. She's a constituent services representative uh, from Jake Auchincloss's office. So Stephanie, um, she's here to sort of observe um, and listen so she gets a better understanding of who we are and what we do. Um, so Stephanie, I'll let you introduce yourself if you'd like to say anything. Sure, and thank you so much for having me. And I, I, I believe last month I was supposed to be on and couldn't make it. And so thank you for your flexibility. Um, I'm Stephanie Gray. I work for Congressman Jake Auchincloss. I, as you said, I'm a constituent services representative and I handle the congressman's social services portfolio, which um, encompasses a variety of different things. Um, and it's not all I do, but I do have the portfolio. And so a lot of times what that means is I am helping constituents connect with uh, federal agencies um, when it comes to their benefits. And so social security disability benefits are a big part of what I do, helping folks navigate that world and um, also VA disability benefits among a variety of other things I do. Um, you know, Medicare, Medicare casework. I was the immigration caseworker for some time, though I did just train one of my colleagues on that. So that's off my plate. Um, we, you know, I can liaise with FEMA and the Department of Labor and the Department of Transportation, depending on what uh, constituents need. And so if there's somebody who's having difficulty with a federal agency, um, my job is to help li to, to liaise with the agency on their behalf. And so a lot of what I do is um, working with folks with disabilities. Um, I also have the disability portfolio, uh, policy portfolio in the district. Um, and so what that means is that when uh, anybody contacts us regarding an issue relating to disabilities, um, I work with my legislative counterpart in DC to support that, um, you know, investigate or, or uh, research, things like that. Uh, for example, we were on a town hall a couple of months ago, um, can't recall, I think it was the Newton town hall, and uh, one of the constituents brought up an issue of accessibility for rideshare, um, rideshare services, and so we met with that constituent one-on-one, -on -one, um, and had meetings mm -hmm. with the government affairs people at Uber and Lyft to communicate the challenges that the constituent was communicating to us. And um, we had some really good conversations and some good outcomes from, from that interaction. So, um, you know, things, things like that. Now, also what I do is connect with stakeholders in the district so that um, I find that it makes me more effective in my job if I know the people in the community who are working um, directly with with folks. So I've been so f when I first started with the congressman about a year and a half ago, I started um, with senior centers. I did a lot of office hours at senior centers. And now I know a lot of the um, directors of senior centers and the outreach folks. So if they have a problem, if they're, you know, when any of their seniors have an issue, they know who to contact in our office and vice versa. If I I've often actually um, had issues where seniors have come to me and for whatever reason um, they can't email something to me directly. I say, just go to your senior center, have them email it to me. And so things like that, uh, the VSOs, the veteran service officers as well. I did a VSO tour of the district where I went out and met with all the um all the veteran service officers who responded back to me, which was a majority of them. And um, now I have contacts when it comes to veterans issues. And so now I am doing the same thing with disability commissions, ADA coordinators, things like that. So I'm more effective at my job when I um, connect with stakeholders in the district. And so um, that is part of why I'm here. The other part is I just want to know what's going on with you all. Um, what are what are you seeing in your city, in your town? Um, and really just kind of what's what's just the finger on the pulse of, of the district. So I... I'm here to learn more about the work that you all do. Um, I really enjoy understanding more about how the different commissions operate, right? Um, 
there's a lot of overlap, but there's also, you know, there are some cities and towns that deal with things that others don't. And so it's, our district is quite diverse. I don't know how many, uh, if you're familiar with the district, but it goes from Needham, Newton, Brookline, all the way down to Fall River. Um, and then it goes from Taunton to Menden. So we mm -hmm. are um, always learning about the different, the ways in which our, our municipalities differ. And that's, it keeps things interesting. Um, it is a challenge in some ways, but it's really, it's really interesting to get to know the different um, municipalities and what they are dealing with. And so that's also why I'm here. So thank you for having me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I'm really here to learn more about you. So I don't know what, <laughs> if, if you all have questions for me, then, then I'm here for that. Um, but, you know, just looking forward to hearing more about the work you all do. Sure, and we're very glad to have you. Any questions uh, for Stephanie um, before we get started? I just I just have a question, um, Stephanie. Um, I don't know, have you been involved with Shailene Davis uh, from Newton Mass? They're doing like a, I don't know if they talk to you. I, I don't know if this is within the scope of what you would also uh, oversee, mm -hmm. but they are doing a needs, needs assessment um, regarding the Metro, the West Metro Home Consortium. Um, you know, which is a uh, it's required by the Department of uh, Housing, uh, Department of Housing and Urban uh, Development. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Happy to forward the information if that's something that you'll be interested in participating. I don't know if you're probably already being contacted about that. Not to my knowledge. Um, so I am also the housing person. Um, no, I don't recall the, you know, hearing about what you just described. I mean, it could be that I look at the email and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's relative to housing. So I wasn't sure, especially housing, you know, greater mm -hmm. needs population, but I wasn't sure if that was something that was within the scope of your. Yeah. It's, it's funny. We, uh, Attleboro just did a housing needs assessment and we were involved in that. actually, I, I, I live in Attleboro. And so I, um, I, did I, I was part of the housing needs assessment twice one for the office and then once for um, my work my volunteer work in the city so this is something that I've I've, I've done uh, with other municipalities so um I, I'm certainly happy to take a look at at what what's being done there and see if there's any way we can be useful um I did it for Attleboro because I am so entrenched <laughs> um in in Attleboro and so uh, actually I I'm very good friends with the chair of the commission on disabilities in Attleboro we do a lot of work together on other things um so anyway uh yeah if you want to send that over to me I'd, I'd be happy to take a look at that although I don't I don't think I'm familiar with that at this point in time okay any other questions for Stephanie at the moment and I'll check again at the end before we wrap um, and maybe uh, we could just go around quickly and do some quick introductions and she's going to be with us for the next hour. Um, I can start. I'm Carol Thomas, one of the co-chairs of the NCOD. Um, and I'll pass it to Jeannie, who is the other co-chair. I'm Jeannie Martin, co-chair. Tatiana? Tatiana Swanson. I am the uh, town liaison to the Commission on Disabilities. I also serve as the town's director of human resources. Yeah. Officer Kelly? Uh, Kelly Scopanetti, liaison for the Needham Police Department. Okay, um, Alexa. Hi, I'm Alexa Moore. I'm the secretary for the NCOD. This is my second term. And I grew up in Needham, so very familiar with the town. Yep. Lynn. Hi, sorry. I, it says Zoom user. I upgraded my computer. <laughs> it's wiped off my name. I'm Lynn Rodman. I'm the newest member of the team. I just joined last month was my first meeting, so... Nice to meet Our you. Official. Special <laughs> meeting. Yeah, she was active before. Yep. Um, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Morales. I'm a member of the commission. And Maureen. Maureen Callahan, a member of the commission. And it's nice to meet you in person, Stephanie. I'm just putting it together right now, Maureen. We work it's together. <laughs> We refer right. our constituents back and forth, depending on whether it's a federal or a state matter. So yeah, it's nice great. to see you. Maureen and I do do a lot of work together to help <laughs> uh, support our constituents. So yeah. great to see you on here. Nice <laughs> to see you. Great. And Babs. Hi, um, welcome, um, Stephanie. My name is Babs Moss. And I don't know how my title is now. Um, uh, I, I'm a resigning uh, member of NCOG. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and she's joined us for a thank you. Which Am I an amaretta? Is it amaretus? Am, 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 amaretus? Yes. Am, am, amaretus. amaretus. Uh, yeah. I, I would me. certainly say so. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have Kalpana, who's a member of the community that also joins us. 
And good evening, Kalpana. Um, okay. Nice to meet you all. Yep. Um, all right. So why don't we get started? Our good first... evening. No, good evening. Yep. I'm glad you can join <laughs> recognizing us. me. Yes, of course. Yes. Um, all right. So Tatiana, if you could give me screen sharing privileges. Yes, of course. I apologize for not doing that at the Oh, that's all right. Okay. So we have Babs, we have a little bit of uh, recognition that we'd like to do for your nine years of service. So we put together a uh, PowerPoint slideshow, sort of an e-card, oh, no. if you will. Um, so <laughs> that's what I am going to show here. If I can just bring this thing up. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the slideshow mode, I think. Oh, how cool. Yep. Okay. Um, so we gathered up some photos. Um, it doesn't do your career justice, but we have a few to share. This is Babs in action. So here she is um, in the um, a photo from a while ago on the bottom left. And then here she is at the Needham Public Library um, doing some work. And you know she did so much with ADA compliance and Tatiana, and here you are inspecting the measure, inspecting the inspector, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you remember any of these. Oh yeah. Yep. yep. And then, yep. yep. Then oh no. Have, um, <laughs> these were Bab had so many talents and brought so much to every gathering. I think they were these were some flowers that you put together for an NCOD luncheon. Um, yes. Uh, not the luncheon. It was um, for. Uh, it was when we had four members of the NCOD the retirement. Retire. Yeah. Um, a couple yeah. of years ago, and so we uh, we did a little lunch for um, for Debbie, um, and um, it was I'm forgetting the other names, but um, we had a little lunch, and um, we did it at the senior center, and I was very tied up with something, and Babs was in charge of the entire decoration, and she did such a fabulous job, mm -hmm. job, and we all got to take um, some of the center pieces home, so that's mine. I took a picture because it was so lovely. Oh, good. Yeah. So she's a woman of many talents, if there was any doubt. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> All right. And then we tried to summarize some of, you know, the many things that we've enjoyed um, in terms of working with you. And we oh, just so, so appreciate your commitments, you know, to the Needham community and especially this community that we serve, how caring you are. We have enjoyed your sense of humor and your willingness to do whatever is needed as you demonstrate even tonight um, and just how friendly and how welcoming you are. Mm -hmm. um, and so we tried to capture a little bit of that. So I've got some um, thoughts that I wrote down and Jeannie wrote down, and then we got some input, a word cloud from everybody. Um, so everybody sort of contributed to the word cloud. It was a little bit of a challenge with, we're not that big of a committee. <laughs> oh, my. oh my, this is wonderful. Yeah. I'm yeah. speechless. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh. Yeah. And so, and we know how you are about, you know, we, um, you know, sort of not accepting things and wanting any gifts or anything, but we did want to recognize your service. So in okay. your honor, we've taken up a collection um, and we are going to get um, this device, which helps people here um, at the CAF. And Tatiana's oh. reached out to them and they've said that they would really appreciate having a device like this. So um, we've taken up a collection and we're going to be getting one in, your, in recognition of your service and giving it to the CAF. Oh, that's so. so nice. That's so thoughtful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. And, <laughs> yes. Um, and we will miss you very much. Um, oh, and we can't that cute. Th thank you enough um, for <laughs> all your service. So I am going to sort of stop talking now. And if anybody else would like to say anything or share a story about Babs, I'm happy to sort of open it up. I do. I, I, I just want to um, uh -oh. point out once again, Babs and I became the bathroom inspection um, uh, ladies for the, for the commission. Uh, we did many bathrooms and many buildings. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we called ourselves the queen of the, th on the thrones, right? The queen of the thrones. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to make sure that our bathrooms were in complying at the library and the storage center for DPW. Um, That's what we founded. Yeah, and the high school, we did the high school too. So we tour yeah. a bunch of buildings uh, with our with our tools. That's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had some good yeah. time. Yeah, we had yeah. Good time. And Rosemary, and Rosemary too, the Rosemary uh, Rec Center. We, that was another we one. did a lot. 
<laughs> the high school, the high school. High school, yeah, I remember that in high school. So um, yeah. it was great to, it's been great working with you and yeah. some of those yeah. projects and just mm -hmm. all of the energy and, and caring and passion that you bring to, to our work. Thank you. Um, so um, I, I have a, a, a speech. It, um, it's short, uh, um, but sweet. And it kind of like describes me. I'm short, you know, and I'm sweet. Very sweet. So, okay. Um, it is with sadness that I'm resigning from, it is with sadness that I'm resigning from this uh, commission. Um, I will always uh, probably treasure my time and, and experience with uh, you guys. Um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be a part of a dynamic, innovative group these past nine years. By the way, this is my resignation letter, so I, I liked it so much, I thought I'd repeat it. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. Um, I, I, what a um, wonderful opportunity this was for me to have the ability to be on the Disabilities Commission with my hearing loss. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. And thank, thank you, Jeannie. Jeannie's the one that invited me um, to join this group. Thank you, Jeannie. And it was we, the best decision I ever made. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Babs and I have known each other since our children were in kindergarten. My son just turned 40, so we've known each other a very long time. Yeah. You are yeah. a very dear friend, and I've learned from you being, I mean, I've known you in many capacities, but it's been wonderful to have you on the commission to see um even to a larger extent your caring personality and your good ideas yeah, and thank you. you've had so much to contribute to ncod and i'm so glad you were a part of our group for this many years okay thank you um thank you for this wonderful presentation and um call me if you need me for anything you know Seriously. we will All yes right? We will. I'll, I'll send you a copy of the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll let you go. I know you have um, a lot to do. And we you love you, Gabs. Awesome. <laughs> you guys rock. All right. <laughs> I'm going to do a big hug. Right. Bye, Babs. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So that is a yeah. tough, tough to follow that. <laughs> so we um, are moving on oh to the um chairperson oh, okay are oh, you trying to leave <laughs> there we go all right um so moving on to the um oh so the C cpac um co-chairs are going to come in january um pam and Lindsay. so they had a conflict with tonight which is probably good because we have a lot to cover tonight um so the next order of business actually is to approve the minutes from the october 17th meeting so was there any discussion or questions about the minutes? And if not, I would take a motion to approve. A Which motion, to approve. Me. <laughs> motion to approve minutes. Right. Thank you, Karen. Um, anybody <laughs> second that? Second, Lynn, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any, Aye. any um, opposed or abstentions? Okay, the minutes pass. Um, and we can move on to the co-chair report. So I think we had two things we wanted to cover, Jeannie, right? One, one was we were just fully staffed for a moment um, with the addition of Lynn. Um, and now we are looking to replace Babs. So we, um, if anybody um, knows of somebody that you think would be a, get, a good candidate, I think you know referrals from this committee are an excellent source. Um, Babs was just a case in point from Jeannie all those many years ago. Um, so, um, and Karen, you have been great about making recommendations. So, you know, yeah. if any, anybody has, you know, any thoughts, um, and then we'll continue to advertise. And I don't have any more to say on that, Jeannie, unless you want to add to that. I do not. Okay. Um, all right. So then our um, other talk. Uh, hello. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Alpana. Uh, I did mention uh, um, uh, at Senior Center. And uh, Latanya still requested to have a draft, like uh, um, kind of a, a position, uh, then it will be easy for them to put it on a um, computer model. And Aisha, the program director is also came back from, uh, uh, I mean, she's now regularly coming to the office. Okay. so. 
uh, center is looking for uh, kind of a, like a draft that what you are uh, okay the position uh, uh, detail as well as um, I did not have a directly talk with uh, Jessica Moss, uh, 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 daughter of the um, Beth, uh, but uh, she is also a wonderful person uh, to consider. It's she actually is. Bab's daughter works at the CAF. Yeah. Um, and so I think Kalpana is suggesting that we advertise um, our opening at the CAF, which I think is a great idea. So mm -hmm. we could certainly um, find a way to post it there. So thank you for that, Kalpana. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Anything else on that topic before we move on to our annual report? Okay. Um, so um, I sent out um, the annual report. Maureen sort of gave it an overhaul. So Maureen, thank you. Oh, I <laughs> not an overhaul. <laughs> Very no. minor little changes and edits. Yeah. Good ideas. Yeah, so. You made some good suggestions and we cleaned some things up. So I have, and that was in the copy, I think, yeah, so I've made those changes, yep. uh, Maureen. And so um, maybe, let me just see here, where did it go? Um, would it be, do you want me to share it or is that more distracting? Do you all have your own copies? What would be easiest? Do you want me to pop it up on the screen or is it? Yeah, we can follow along if, if okay. you have it. Yeah, I think that's yeah, a good I, idea. All right, I got it right here, hold on. So um, yeah. let me just go through this. So. Um, I think we have all our members correctly listed and you have to remember that this time frame is July 1 through June 30th. So all that we've done, you know, since June is in next year's report. Um, and so this first part just talks about who we are and what our purpose is. Um, so I'm assuming that part is probably okay. Um, and then we talked about our budget. Um, and so we haven't really um, spent very much. We have an opportunity um, to spend um, our budget, and Tatiana's going to talk more about that in her section. I did attend the budget meeting last week. Actually, um, I see a grammatical area er, error in the first yep. line of the budget. Yep. Yeah, there is only expenses oh. as only. was as follows. Okay, yeah. there's a couple of different ways to write that, but um, yeah, I I'll clean that up. Yeah, the only expense. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to highlight it and I'll fix it. I noticed later. that before. Yeah. Um, and so, um, Alexa, thanks to your very good minutes, we have captured all of the highlights in terms of the hmm. advising that we did, the advocacy calls, the accessible parking, the grants, the community service education, um, a lot in that area, and then development and support, our partnership with the MOD, the Parks and Rec partnership. Um, so we captured all of those. Is there anything glaring or big that we missed from our activities from last year? I'm thinking not because we, you know, um, we, I think we captured everything, you know, based on the, the minutes and Jeannie mm -hmm. and I went through it sort of month by month. Um, so I'd like to sort of focus our discussion then on the, the goals. So maybe we could just take this section by section. Let me just see if I can, I want people to be able to see it, but let me just see if I can get it all on one page here. So in terms of in our role as advising, um, this is what we said we wanna focus on next year um, to make sure you know we're in compliance um, with MAAB and the ADA. I'm not gonna read all these things, but is there anything that, that is missing from anybody's perspective from the section, or is there a question about anything that we've got on here? So I just have one question for Maureen. Maureen, um, I, I, I saw you at one of the local emergency management uh, meetings, and I was wondering, are, are you in, are, it just dawned on me that you may also be there in your capacity of your regular <laughs> day job. Is Are you doing dual roads? I'm, I'm just, because I'm happy to attend those. If we don't have a representative, are you currently representing the NCOD too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I had offered when um, we had talked about that months ago. And so, I, and it does serve me well in my job too. So it's kind of doing, yeah, double duty. Awesome. Thanks, Maureen. Sure. Okay, great. Is there anything anybody wants to comment on in the section before I, I move us along? Just the typo at the bottom, uh, the last bullet. 
of thrombosis support for people with disabilities. Oh yeah, goodness. All right, I'll fix that one. Thank you. Um, okay, so moving on to ADA compliance. Um, you know, this is what we do when you know there are issues um, or there's um, new buildings going up. Any anything to add to that or questions about what we got? And then um, for accessible parking, we've got these two goals. Officer Kelly, these sound good to you? Yeah. Okay. Um, then we've got the grant program, which we'll continue to promote. Um, Moving along, community education. Um, that was it. So is there anything um, else, um, anything that's that's missing or any other discussion that you wanna have about our plans uh, um, for this year that we're in? The um, autism awareness program, was it? It's not under community education. Was that further up on the? I, I know we had it somewhere. Yeah, so it's in a different bullet, right? Yeah. I think we had it with. Um, well, that's something that we started. Maybe advising. That is as a new goal because we just started in FY twenty four. Yep. So you put it down as a as a goal for next year. So for yeah. this year. Okay. For this year. Uh. So I don't see it in advising. I right? yeah. Compliance. I think it might be wasn't. Was it the last one under advising? Hmm. No, that was the disability friendly. Oh, award. business. It's different. Yeah. I don't see it. No, I think we should add that. I think yeah. that's a good add. Um, under um under advising, I think we added the disability friendly, but we didn't add the autism. Yeah, I think I, I added, I think I sent that, but I don't remember. I could go back to my notes, Carol, because I think I did remember like, oh, that is something we started that we yes. want to continue. I can look Maybe at my- Maybe it's in the recap, like the earlier section, if we started it before June. Right. But the goal can be, you know, right. to continue. I think it, yeah, I think it would be for this year because the work is being done in this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go back and add a bullet. About, I'll clean that up. Okay, so we'll spare you all the words, nothing. Okay, that was a good catch. Um, was there anything else for goals for this year? That is, we have got a lot <laughs> to do. Um, all right. So if there's nothing else on that topic, I appreciate everybody's input. I am going to move us along to Tatiana. I think this brings us to your report uh, where you're yes. going to talk more about autism awareness as part of it, right? Yes. And the budget. So since the last, um, I also wanted to, since the last um, time we met. Tatiana? Uh, yes. Your, your voice is very garbled for me. I don't know if it's my computer or something on, on your end. Is it to anyone else? Are they having trouble understanding Katiana? No. I can hear okay. Okay, yeah. I guess it must be my computer then. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say I do have new monitors and one of them has a built-in camera, which is why you're seeing me in a different angle. So I'm wondering if that's messing up with my sound if the speakers are trying okay. to pick me up. I, I can um, hear you well enough. It's just not okay. as clear as some of the other voices. <laughs> can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is the flyer that went out to, I work with the uh, JP um, Liagia, who's our newest um, economic development manager um, in trying to spread the word on the Autism Welcoming Initiative. I wanted something um, that we could send out to local businesses through the mailing uh, list that we keep um, about this opportunity uh, and the details on, on, on what is our contribution and, um, and what is expected of them. So I try to fit as much detail as I could into this flyer, which was emailed um, to uh, most local businesses. We actually went back and forth because 
he said, do you want all local businesses? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, but that's like, do you want like, you know, someone that sells lumber? And I'm like, nah, you're right. Maybe it should be tailored to customer service or, you know, public facing businesses, right? So not something like a, maybe not like a realtor or something like that. So um, we did send it out. Um, that was out on November 8th. Uh, but I wanted to see if the commission would entertain uh, a motion to also have something posted either on the social media for the town or a local newspaper, which I know it's not existent now, but I, I'm not really sure how people are getting uh, news now in town, if there's a, a favorite or a, or a preferred uh, mechanism for local news. Or they need an observer. Yeah, yeah. It, they're very good. Um... We a lot of it's news oriented, you know, kind of really town municipal kind of matters. I don't know. They they might be willing to kind of run something like this, but I'm not positive. But they're certainly they're definitely building a big base of people who are getting their news that way. Needham Observer. The Needham Observer. I can send you that information, Tatiana. Yeah. Um, the it, editor's contact information. Yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll try that. I again, my next step was to have something like that, maybe included in the news you need them. Okay. Um, yeah. Does have a, a wide base of subscribers, so we could reach some people that way. Um, and then as an old alternative to maybe, I know the chamber of the Charles River Chamber of Commerce serves more than need them, but um, I want my next step was also trying to reach them to see if they will be interested on. Um, maybe if, they're, if they have a way to determine who's a need on business versus a new you know, water town. Yep, so they definitely do. <laughs> if you have a favorite spot, please help us uh, spread the word in town. Um, you know, nail salon, restaurant, uh, anything like that. Um, it, we would love to see someone um, take us up on our offer to pay for the training. So you said it went out on November 8th, Tatiana, is that right November to local 9th. businesses? 9th, okay. Yep. And no one no one has kind of followed up on it or, or reached no, out? No, not yet. No, oh, yeah. I am the point of contact and I have not been contacted about it, I but. Can, um, copy and paste that information to Glenn, the guy that runs the restaurant group. Oh yeah. Oh, Glenn and Momo, he, yeah. Yeah, he, he said if I gave him all of the information when I asked him a while back, he would be able to reach out like directly to people. But now that we have all the information, I think I can just copy that to him and then he can probably find the right person. Would you like me to forward you the email, Karen? Thank you. Yes. And then I'll do that. That's easy. I'll do that. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, that is, uh, any other questions about autism and awareness? Um, like I said, if you can help us uh, spread the word through your own networks, that would be great. Okay. Um, just... It may just be the time of year that we're not hearing from it, anyone. Maybe in January, there'll be more of a response, hopefully. Sure. Yeah. Um, that's true. Maybe we should try to push for um, towards the new year or a new um, publicity. Uh, next up, um, I want to share with you the submission for the FY25 uh, budget for the Commission on Disabilities. For those of you who are new, the Commission on Disabilities re uh, receives a small um, budget uh, composed of um, $550 a year, which hasn't changed pretty much, at least since I've been a member of the commission. In, when I, I became a member of the commission in 2016, uh, the number has not changed. Uh, some years, this commission struggles to uh, spend all the money. Um, some years are better than others, depending on what's going on with our activities. But I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what was submitted to the finance committee and the town manager for the consideration. Um, it was a level funded submission, meaning there was no increases or decreases to the current um, charge. And in addition to the expenses, which add up to $550, there's a $1,500 uh, payment to the stipend, the town, the town liaison. Um, and so mostly it is meant to cover um, basic uh, equipment and, uh, and supplies uh, to allow us to run our meeting. 
Now, of course, when this budget was originally created, the commission was still meeting in person. Um, we were paying for paper, for ink, for people who were printing the agendas or printing subsequent materials. Now, all of that is being handled electronically. So the line remains, we are able to reallocate those funds um, as need be. For example, if we were to wanted to advertise um, any part of the commission, including maybe some of these initiatives um, related to autism welcoming, we could reroute some of these, um, you know, spending funding to that purpose. Um, this is just basically the baseline of what we present uh, for, for needs. Um, in the past, we've also used a lot of this funding to recognize retiring members. Unfortunately, that's become a trend in the later years as we're uh, seeing some turnover with our members. So we do set aside some money to, um, to recognize um, exiting members uh, from the mission. Um, the budget summary is just an overview of some of the things that we've been involved with. I, I put this together using you know, some of the minutes that we had um, that, that, we've, that Alexa has put together. Thank you, Alexa. Um, and so it's just letting the finance committee know, the town manager know, um, what are some of the things that we're working on, what are some of the things that we're seeing, um, and just basically what is it that makes up our budget. Um, Carol attended the um, budget hearing invite. Um, as a small budget, we are not required to attend, but we're always invited. And this year it happened that we actually could have a member of the NCOD come in and present. And uh, I'm sorry, Kara, I thought they were going to ask me the questions. They asked you the questions. That's all right. Was, <laughs> she was put on the spot, but she did great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you know, I just wanted, I thought that they should, you know, see us, you know, alive and well and active. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that was great. Um, I think they appreciate, you know, hearing from the small committees as well. So thank you for doing that. So um, I just wanted to share with you all what was submitted for the budget, which again, hasn't been changed for years. Um, of course, if there's a, if anyone identifies a need or a, a reason for an increase or something that we may want to take up in the future, um, you know, prior to um, the June meeting is when we will need to be in discussions with that. Anyone have any questions? straightforward but um thank you for letting me geek out about the budget because i do i that's what i used to do before i, I came to hr so i always love to talk about the process <laughs> all right actually can, can i ask one brief thing i know this is straightforward this is the base budget that we get but then there's monies that we get from uh the fees that are charged for people in the hand, you know, who park illegally in the handicap parking. What is what is that amount to each year? I'm, I'm just curious, or roughly. So the last I provided a a, a, um, a balance at the last meeting. Let me just sorry, remember. I should have remembered that then, but I don't. I know. No, 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 no. It's like no, seven thousand no. something. It's about seven thousand. Yeah, I, I um, one second. per year, or is that just what's in the budget no. now? No, it's, it's, so that the... yeah, so that funding is collected from the parking. For violations to uh, parking violations on the on and specifically um, uh, disabled parking, disability parking, and so that balance is kind of like it, it rolls over every year, so we don't lose it. Um, and the last time I provided I, pro I provided that balance was on October seventeen. That total balance was seven thousand three hundred and thirty eight dollars and twenty one cents. That is the funding that we use to um, to grant award money for the you know when when people uh, apply for our grants, but that is separate from this budget. Yeah. This budget sits in the operating budget of the town, so meaning mm -hmm. all the town that the, all the money that the town gets on a yearly basis to conduct operations, mm -hmm. and that is approved by town meeting. Right. So, right. Um, like I said, this is change. Um, town meeting actually you know doesn't approve our use of the handicap. Um, parking fund on a year-to-year on -year basis, but they do approve um, the uh, allocation of these funding um, okay. that we're seeing right now to the commission, for the commission's use. Yeah, and I think, and part of Maureen's question was, on average, you know, how much do we get each year? I know that's what's accumulated, but just roughly how much is for it? the parking, money? yeah. Do you have a sense of that? I do not have a sense of that. I can bring it for next meeting. Yeah. Um, when I request the... The balance. I usually just focus on what we have, yeah. but I think I think I think for the for like the you know remember during COVID nothing was coming in because <laughs> no one was out and parking. But um, I think that might have that probably has changed because 
we're seeing somewhat of a healthy balance again, and we we have um, dispersed some grants. So um, so I, I can come back and see what has been you know uh, collected year after year. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions about the budget? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I think we are moving on to other business now. And so we wanted to talk, have some more discussion on how we can recognize needed businesses that are welcoming um, to people with disabilities. Um, and, you know, along with that, um, you know, is there a list of, you know, buildings and businesses that, you know, aren't accessible? And so, um, Karen and Maureen, I know um, you had asked for this to be on the agenda. So um, I just want to sort of open it up for discussion on those two topics. Yeah, I mean, I know we. I was really struck when I was at the nail salon, um, Serenity, and that's where I had met Pam. I know she isn't going to join, but they were they so beautifully um for anyone not knowing pam is a blind member of our community and they meet her at her uber and guide her into the store and she has people at serenity nails that explain the colors to her in such a beautiful way just flawlessly without her asking and i was like wow they also help me in a wheelchair and like i don't even need to ask questions they just like know how to navigate it and nobody ever seems annoyed that it takes more effort. So it just is a neat thing that we thought it would be maybe interesting to provide an award from the community to businesses that really go above and beyond. And it could be, we would have to set the criteria, but it could be an interesting way to get some more play for what people are actually doing. Yeah. Um, or maybe we could start, you know, with that salon. I mean, that sounds like two, you know, beautiful examples. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, um, and maybe that, you know, could be contagious. So the key part would be ever getting a lot of advertising, you know, a lot of PR over this so that other businesses say, Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think we would need to work a little bit with, um, probably the public affairs person from Needham, but I also think also with channel five located here, it's just a nice kind of heartwarming human interest story for our the holidays like just they always are looking for those little like things that feel good right um that's i think an interesting thing that they that we could do um i, don't mm. know. I can uh, provide the police dogs too if you wanted to do a little um uh, photo op yeah yeah you, get the police dogs, you can give her like some kind of certificate or a thank you or something yeah. just to that would yeah. be really, really neat. I mean, I think they've done, they've done just a really nice job. And mm -hmm. I, I actually think the people that work there, like truly, you can tell when people are helping you and they're doing it because they feel like they have to, or because they truly want to. And I think Pam and I, that's how we started to talk. I was like, they're so nice here. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you know, she was specific. She was like, last time, whoever gave me bad color advice, I don't want that color advice. I want Alice to give me color advice. My daughters and my nails were too pink. <laughs> so it was cute. And they were like, oh, Pam, okay. We can yeah. give you better color advice. It was just sweet. Um, so I think that would be neat. And then I've also just noticed, you know, there are still some businesses downtown. My, my daughter wanted me to take her to get jeans at the new cute little boutique downtown. And there's stairs to get in. Uh, and I'm yeah. like, what are we doing in a downtown commercial area to sort of incent business owners to like have a ramp. So, I mean, I was in Paris last weekend and I thought that it was interesting. A lot of stores have a handicap accessible decal on the bottom window. And if you ring a bell or if you signal to them, they will bring a ramp and put oh. it in the store to get you up the two stairs. There's a, I meant to send this before the meeting and I forgot and then I missed the deadline. There's a program in Toronto where the municipalities kind of like will give um, handicap parking permits, they will provide ramps to stores that don't have them to make things accessible if they request it. I mean, not like, you know, a ramp that would go a whole story, but two or three steps, they can, they can create ramps and they're made out of um, wood and other materials. And I think that would be an interesting program if we had any opportunity to do something like that. 
Karen, I'm curious, did you attempt to see if they had an alternative for access for access to the building or they did not? I asked that day I didn't because we were double parking and I'm like, I can't even get in. So my daughter ran in, bought what she wanted and left, but I'll call, I can call and ask. I'll, I'll call and ask if there's another way in, but there's no symbol or anything of like letting you know that there is mm -hmm. another way in, which I thought was interesting in, in Paris when I saw that those decals on the windows and they're really small. It was, you know, just like a tiny little decal in the bottom that was like, you know, just letting you know if you needed service you could you could get in so hmm. debbie debbie heller remember correct me if i'm wrong Jeannie, but debbie heller used to send those kind of like friendly reminder type emails to businesses and to say hey we noticed that you may not have the best you know accessible entrance or pathway to your business and i i don't believe that we have someone designated to continue on that you know because we <laughs> we can't enforce it um, no yeah no. sometimes it's not the I, I think in a lot of these situations it's a a commercial owner that owns the building renting it to retail space the retail right. owner doesn't own the building but also i'm like when do these commercial owners need to like get up to code like if you have two steps getting into your building you should have a ramp like it's yes. 2023 like come on or an alternative right yeah so or an alternative in and, yeah, an um, alternative. Maybe it's just that the, that the businesses are not doing a great job letting you know what the alternative is. So something yeah, like, and, and a lot of them don't have it. Even Birds Hill Pharmacy, because I've taken myself and kids to get shots there. They have two steps to get in. I have to call them. They'll come to the car and do it in the car or bring you stuff, but you have to call. And that's like a pharmacy without a ramp and there's two steps to get in. You're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. That's probably considered reasonable accommodation on their part. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Not illegal, but certainly reasonable accommodation. They could go the extra step and have a ramp. Yeah. I mean, because that's funny. why I think, you know, sorry. Yeah. sorry, go ahead. I mean, recognizing businesses, you know, is sort of a positive way of reinforcing, yeah. you know, that and maybe getting people, you know, to be, uh, do a better job with it, you know, like you're talking about. So almost like an ambassador is what I'm thinking um, to remind businesses of, of, of sort of what, you know, the responsibilities are to make sure that people have access to their, to the, to entry, to enter their, their premises. Yeah. Cause there are quite a few stores in downtown Needham that are not accessible. And I just wonder like, can they do better in that yeah. way? Can yeah. we start by making a list of those yeah. businesses? Okay. Yeah. And then maybe we get a subcommittee to put together a letter that we can send out to them. Yeah, a template that, that works on, on providing notification and maybe have them an hey, give them an opportunity to to provide, you know, to uh, to respond. They might have a plan. It might just not be a great plan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you be willing to put that yeah. list together, Karen? Okay. And I can just do us, I'll do a survey downtown of like the loop and then um a couple other things that i can think of like building establishments but maybe not you know everything because i know all those offices that sit above like where harvey's used to be all that is staircases i know because my son had a tutor up there once like so any of those things downtown in the upstairs they don't have elevators but yeah. that's fine okay good and I then need to be in the subcommittee that's drafting or sending letters to the businesses Excellent. Um, and what about the recognition concept? Um, what would be the way forward on that one? I think well, we're, we're sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna I'm just curious if you think we need like a vote or like a, you know, some sort of open process where people can nominate other businesses or yeah. if not, then we make this first award, maybe at minimum, we should give people an opportunity to nominate another business yeah. because there yeah. could be other members of the community who've had experiences that are very positive at other businesses we're just not aware of. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we could put, I think we need to keep it simple, but I think, you know, maybe we could put together, you know, um, you know, a proposal for the, for the meeting in January about how this, you know, how this could work. 
Okay. And get some visibility okay. for Writing the work we down. do yeah. in addition for the businesses. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice. You know, I think it would be nice if like that is like a goal of us in the future of to feel like we are like truly an inclusive alter not only mobility, but mobility <clears throat> open downtown and economic network and that we're pushing and trying to, you know, help businesses be more compliant. And we start tracking our data, what percentage of businesses truly are. I mean, that could be another thing to put in our annual report every year. Right. I mean, and I be- asked, did we discuss how we were going to recognize the business? Like, where are we going to recognize them or do, is it just so I, I think we need to sort of think this through and, okay. and and put a proposal together. You know, somebody, you know, if there's anybody that wants to, you know, to work on this, um, you know, I, I think, you know, maybe there could be, you know, a subcommittee that could, you know, work on this or a person that could, you know, put together a proposal um, that we could, you know, talk about sort of how, you know, how would it work? How could we do, you know, a survey and and then, you know, do, do some recognition? I can put a draft proposal together and then run it by a smaller subcommittee if Alexa wants to do it or if Maureen's interested in yeah. looking at it. And then, um, I, cause I don't know how to do anything that's like government approved. I know how to do this in corporate America, but I'm not sure if it's gonna like meet the standard of bureaucracy. So someone's got a gut check. Me I can on. do that fact check after the fact okay. check. Yeah. Okay, good. I- I and mean, then, I think we could just, you know, if you could put something together to get us started, that would be, okay. and yeah. then we can go from there. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Karen, I'd be happy to work on that with you too, because okay. I think it's awesome. a really good thing. I, I see it as a sort of making the award based on your recommendation, quite honestly, mm-hmm. and then saying, this is the launch. Yeah. We're recognizing this business, but mm-hmm. now we want to hear from you and other people and who've had really good experiences and nominate somebody, nominate that you're, you know business that you frequent that is really going above and beyond. And then I think hopefully it's, it catches on. Yeah. yeah and they could say, use your contacts at Charles River to ask those folks that, op, you know, people that frequent Charles River, mm-hmm. people that work there that could give us some other ideas and businesses. And I think through possibly the CPAC people in the January meeting, we could talk to the teachers about reaching out to that family email server because they were interested oh, in anything. Yeah. Um, where they could ask some of the parents that have had experiences, even with different sensory issues or, you know, other right. things, other ability would be good to be expansive. Yeah. I think it's but, important, whatever we, that we list the criteria so that, you know, people right. are clear yeah. on, on yeah. what, why. Yeah. yeah. And I did see, I forgot the last time I went to the nail salon, I saw a woman taking begrudgingly taking like a young adult man in to get some service done and I think he might have had sensory challenges and she's like I'm sorry I called a lot and they're like it's okay like he looked so uncomfortable but I'm like that was another good example of like mm-hmm. poor guy with his mom getting a pedicure with all yeah. these women <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I like the positive recognition aspect yeah. of it I think it's a good way of encouraging others to do the same and um maybe raise the awareness and I love the idea of getting some PR for it. Like you mentioned, yeah. Karen, like Channel 5, NBC 10 is also in Needham over in oh. the um, well, that's right. bus- it is. business park. So yeah. we've got some, you know, it could be kind of a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the police have a great following too. We could always put it on the police page. Yeah. yeah. You do. Terrific. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys have really been crushing the PR recently. Sorry, Maria. That was a side <laughs> tell. It. So you guys have been doing we a have. job with your social mm-hmm. media. You really have. Yeah. Um, usually the photos that you see are usually taken by me, but the um the constant contact that's office brandy and um his dog rocket. So it's 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 a tag team. Mm. It's a lot of work, but it's definitely paying off. It's really good. I read I read all of them. Um yeah. it's yeah. I think Yeah, and especially the way that you handled the the challenges that happened this weekend at the temples and like the response yeah. there. I thought I've heard a lot of people talking. And to mm-hmm. talk about feeling like it was very inclusive and they felt safe and they were proud of their police department. So mm. yeah. for that, seriously, that's another. Yeah, that's where is where we had yeah. another incident at St. Joe's about a month ago. Yes. Um. So that was a false alarm too, but it was a long false alarm. Alarm, and it was very um, scary, intense mm. for yeah. a while. So yeah. So we 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 try to do our best, but we answer questions as much as we can on social media. It's when you don't answer the questions that people get upset. So I think that's yeah. what the key is right now. 
Yeah. And even finding the girl who was missing from Needham High, well, that was, you did a good job with the PR on that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Um, all right. good, all good, um, good endings to all those things. <laughs> yeah. And these are good next steps with both of these initiatives. Yeah. Um, so, so for thank the you. January meeting, I should bring a draft. Is that yes. good? And then Maureen and, um, and um, Alexa and anybody else, I can send you a draft. Uh, to look at, oh, before the meeting. Thank you. I'm allowed to, am I allowed to do that out of a meeting to send? Um, to yeah, and then, yeah. And then I, I can send out whatever is the current draft, you know, when I send out the agenda. Okay. All right, cool. Perfect. Um, okay. So that was other business. So we're moving along now to the update. Um, we don't have anybody here from the school departments um, or um, Felix for accessible parking. So I don't know, Kelly, Officer Kelly, if there's anything you want to share about that. Mm, nothing, no. Um, so Lynn, uh, anything from the Needham Diversity Initiative? No, I, uh, I'm on the emails and I will, uh, I know they're starting to work on things for uh, Martin Luther King in the, in the winter, so. Okay, good. I saw that same thing. And then that brings us to you, Maureen, and the LEPC. Uh, the focus of that meeting um, a couple of weeks ago was purely about the Brockton um hospital uh, fire that they had and uh, just evacuations and how they kind of multi-prong coordination with, you know, all that kind of stuff. It was nothing that was, you know, a lot of them are, they seem to be focusing very specifically on different incidents and, you know, their handling of it, but there's nothing that's like that relevant. I mean, it's interesting to listen to, but it's not like, oh, I need to bring this back. It's not nothing. Uh, I'm hoping one of the future meetings will have something that's a little bit more pertinent for our, our purposes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to new business. Um, I potentially have one thing. Does anybody have anything else? So we have, um, while you think about that, we have got sort of a late breaking contact earlier today um, from Meg Bandera from... Um, she is from the founder of Unpaved Trails for All, a Massachusetts disability-led volunteer group that's advocating for more accessible nature trails around the state. And we have just been having all these conversation around accessible trails, you know, based on what may or may not be going into the old Muzzy site. So, um, and they're looking for um, us as a commission to support their concept. And there is a link to the bill in this communication that we just got. Um, is that anything you know about Stephanie? No, not familiar with that. Okay. Um, and so, um, I think this is something that we've is it probably, federal, Carol, is it, is it a federal bill or is it state? Do you um, know? It's, it's a state. Um, okay. it's being considered by the state, um, legislation that would increase accessibility. And as part of the advocacy for this bill, they're providing information to disability commissions around the state, and they have the support of many other commissions, including Framingham and Boston, and they want to connect with us um, and add Needham to the list. So, um, Tatiana, keep me in line here in terms of a, the protocol, but I think we would have to vo vote on this in order to join the, the list. Do you know? It doesn't have heard. Yeah. Did do they have, I don't know that I don't know that do people feel like they have enough information to yeah no so I was going to send this information with the link so everybody could read about it and I and I'm going to have okay, to investigate so, the, the timing so I of think it. we can send the link and then plan to discuss in January in, in January yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So take I, a vote yeah yeah do, do they have money Carol to like help subsidize building an accessible trail is it like if we join the list um, so I think we, they, um, so there's a whole lot of information and we just got this email today. Oh, so I'm sort of, this, yeah. That's okay. know, sort of real time, but I will forward this email out to everybody. I'll put it on the January agenda. I'm not sure what the timeline is, but there can't be anything happening in the state legislator legislation between now and January, probably based on holidays. Um, so that would give time for everybody to consider it. And then we can have some discussion and, you know, vote on it in the January meeting. But I thought this was, you know, right up our alley since we had been talking about accessible trails and how to promote them. So, yeah. Um, so I will get that out. Um, is, is there any other new business? 
I just want to give you all a heads up that I'm forwarding an invite uh, for a public meeting. Uh, we've been, you know, the town has tried to uh, make sure that all boards and committees and people in the community are aware of any uh, major decisions the town is taking. So this is with regards to the um, the site uh, at Linden Chambers, which I'm not really sure what that is, but um, there is a meeting that's scheduled for Wednesday, December 6th. It is, um, it is at the Broadway School Performance Center, but also via Zoom. Uh, so I'm just, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I'm pouring that invite in case anyone wants to attend and, and listen yeah. to um, to the planning board about uh, the uh, the rezoning effort at the Linden Chamber site. Okay, that's right. the Needham Housing Authority housing. Right? that that and they're the proposing planning. a redevelopment for. So and the zoning changes. It's going to be a they're proposing a denser uh, building uh, build out for uh, to increase renovate, I'm sorry, completely build out different space, but also at the end of the day, have more housing, a more yeah. deeply affordable housing. So that's what that's about. Okay. Um, and before I call for a motion to adjourn, I'm going to open it back up to see if anybody has any questions for Stephanie or Stephanie, if you have anything to share with us, you know, from, you know, listening to the meeting, do you have any questions for us? Um, no, I, just, I I'm really grateful for the opportunity to hear about the things that you're doing. I think the business uh, recognition idea is fantastic. I like that a lot. I think that'll be really a great thing to promote the idea of accessibility when some people, unfortunately, it's it's not something that they think about on the day to day, right? So I think I think that's great, and I just really appreciate the work that you're all doing, and happy to take any questions. Um, but happy to be here and thanks for having me. Yep. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, okay. If there's any, um, nothing else, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. Anybody? Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Thanks, Maureen. A second. Okay. okay Alexa. All right. So all in favor? I. So that brings us to happy Thanksgiving um, and um, enjoy the break in December. Um, and the holidays. And um, we've got a lot of good things in the works. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody in January. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Carol, um, thank you very much for putting yeah. together that slideshow for Babs. That was really terrific. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. It was fun to do. And I appreciate everybody's support and input. So 